Hey everybody, this is Praxis and I've got some bad news for you. As a prepper, there's all sorts of different things that I and you and other people keep their eyes on. And if X, Y, or Z happens, we know that, you know, that shit's about to hit the fan. Well, there's one metric that I am always kind of keeping my eye on because in the past, whenever this thing has happened, crazy shit has followed. And that thing just happened. So let's talk about it. Hey, this is Praxis. So what is this thing that I have picked up on that has me thinking something might be coming down the road pretty soon? I'm going to address that in just a moment, but first I want to talk about something that's really tightly related to it to kind of give you guys some context, and it relates to this specific channel. Uh, over the past couple weeks, I've noticed a lot of, of comments on my videos have been disappearing. Uh, you know, you guys are very active very frequently and leaving comments. I always try to get back to people's uh, comments and questions. Uh, and I've noticed some questions when I've, uh, or comments when I've tried to reply to them. I get the comments sent to my email. Uh, when I've tried to reply to them, they're gone. They're not related to the video anymore. There's one of three things that could be happening there. One is that you guys are deleting them. You write a comment and then delete it. Uh, that could be the case, but I know many of them have been from people that are longtime commenters, and it, I know it's not their habit of deleting their own material. Plus, the comments are perfectly well thought out and well phrased and not mean spirit or anything, not the kind of thing where it's like, oh, I wish I hadn't written that. Not that kind of stuff. Um, the other uh, I'm sorry, the other possibility could be that I am uh, deleting them and somehow forgetting that I'm deleting them, you know, insanity, uh, that could be a uh, possibility. Or the third, most likely, uh, reason that the comments are disappearing is because YouTube is deleting them, and I think that that's obviously what's going on. Um, I want to let you guys know that if I'm not getting back to your comments, that's that's a pretty good reason as to why that is probably the case. Uh, I don't like that they're doing that. I think that uh, the great thing that we have here uh, with the format of YouTube is that we have an opportunity to uh, exchange ideas in a civil and polite manner so that we can both uh, you know, learn from each other uh, and uh, you know, connect with each other in a way that is peaceful and a way that is, well, again, civil. Um, if that is taken away from people, people find a way of resolving their uh, differences that aren't in a civil way. So uh, I really think it's terrible that YouTube is removing, uh, I presume, uh, content that uh, they don't agree with or whatever. There's some, I know, I'm sure it's not an individual person going in, but you know, some kind of an algorithm that's looking for keywords or whatever, and, it, and it's pulling things out. And it's a real shame because it removes people's ability to discuss things in that kind of peaceful, civil way. I know that I just recently tried to uh, react to a comment that someone had posted about COVID. And they said that they had had COVID early on and you know they're not that concerned about the new variants because they have, they've developed that natural immunity. Well, I was gonna let them know, uh, based on my best information, that that is probably not the case. That uh, if you got COVID early on, these new Delta mutations have mutated enough where your natural immunity isn't really going to be effective anymore. And it's the same with the, a lot of the vaccines. The vaccines are losing their effectiveness as the virus continues to mutate. That's why we don't have a vaccine for the common cold. COVID is a form of coronavirus and coronaviruses are one of the, um, uh, one of the bugs that are responsible for common colds. I mean, there are multi-million dollar, if not billion dollar industries devoted to like the most trifling inconveniences, like, I mean, like underarm wetness. The million dollars are made off of that. You know, if there's an opportunity to relieve some kind of suffering or discomfort or, you know, underarm wetness, something really trifling, uh, you know, from people, if there's money to be made on that, you know, people are going to figure out a way to, uh, you know, make money off of that. The reason that uh, vaccines have not been created for colds is uh, not because people aren't interested in not, you know, going to work looking like death, uh, you know, with runny noses, red eyes and everything like that. It's not because people don't care about that. It's just that it's really difficult to create vaccines for these things because they constantly mutate and making the vaccines you know, not work anymore. Uh, I, I presume that there's been plenty of research in the past that's kind of established that. We're seeing that now with the COVID vaccines where, I mean, we're just six to eight months in and they're already, you know, they're still very effective. And if you're out in public a lot, they're probably a good idea to pop in on. The side effects seem very small. But, uh, you know, again, after, you know, a half a year or maybe a little bit more, they're already starting to lose their effectiveness. So, um, 
I want to let the person know about that, that uh, you know, their natural immunity also was losing its effectiveness. So they should, if they don't want to get it again, they had a pretty bad experience the first time they said, if they don't want to get it again, they should consider you know, being really careful. I didn't have the opportunity to do that because YouTube removed their comment. Now I went to their, their homepage and I like went to their discussion section on their, on their individual website and I left that comment there, but I can't always do that. And uh, if you are leaving comments and I'm not getting back to you, that's why I'm sorry. It's stupid. Uh, it is uh, anti anti-American, anti-human, I guess to some degree. I mean, the I idea of America is that we come together and settle our differences peacefully, you know, through civil discord and everything, not just erasing things that you don't want to even believe that anybody ever said. You know, that's not the way you change minds. That's the way you start revolutions. And we don't want to see that when, if we can have a civil discourse and learn from each other. So that is going on, and that relates directly, really, to uh, what I'm going to talk about in this video. I, 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 you know, I hooked you at the beginning, saying I, you know, there's this thing that whenever it happens, crazy shit happens afterwards, and this thing has started to happen. It relates to YouTube kind of quashing ideas, and uh, it is specific to news, uh, news sources. I get my news from lots of different sources. Uh, I like centrist sources. I like uh, you know sources from the right. I like sources from the left. I mostly use centrist and right wing kind of sources because I'm pretty left leaning on my own, so I don't feel like I need those opinions <laughs> necessarily because they're they're already all up in here. Uh, so I, I like to kind of get stuff from the center, get stuff from the from the right. Uh, one of my centrist news sources, and you may disagree that this is centrist, but I see it as centrist, uh, is National Public Radio (NPR). Uh, before you criticize that, you should know that NPR is not just one thing. There's the national, national public radio, it's like the umbrella corporation of the whole thing, and then there's all these different local stations. Even here in New England, we have Boston Public Radio, New York Public Radio, Vermont, New Hampshire Public Radio, all these different uh, public radios, and they all have their different flavors and tastes. Uh, there's some that I prefer more than others. New York Public Radio, if you're listening, I love classical music, but maybe you don't have to play as much of it as you do every day. Um, so, uh, you know, depending on where you are, maybe you have some horrid national public radio station. But generally speaking, I found them to be uh, pretty useful, really. I mean, I, and I think that's the best thing you can say about a, a news service is, is it useful and is it helpful in predicting what's going on around you and what's going to be happening in the future? If you've been watching my channel for a while and you think, hey, that Praxis, he's a guy that seems to, you know, see things coming ahead of when they happen, like if you recall, I warned everyone about COVID a couple of months before you know the world realized what it was. I said this is probably going to be something that's going to disrupt society. It might be something that's kind of dangerous. We should really keep our eyes on this. This is this is going to be different than all those false alarms in the past. If you remember me saying that, if you remember me, uh, you know, suggesting you should do things like prep food and stuff because you know the, the price of food might go up if there are environmental sorts of issues, and you know we've been starting to see a lot of that now. If you've been watching my channel for a while and you feel like I'm worth watching, a lot of the reason that I'm worth watching is because I am getting information from out in the world, kind of digesting it in my head and making decisions off it. And a lot of that information does come from national public radio. So whether or not you agree with a lot of the opinions that are expressed on NPR or not, I, really, I think you really can't deny the utility of it as being kind of a clearinghouse of lots of information of stuff that's happening all over the world. I've always used it to make what I think have been good decisions in the past. I feel like I've always been a little bit ahead of the curve. And I think that if you gave it a shot, even if you're not a public radio fan at the moment, you might find some of that utility yourself. Are there garbagey stories from, now, <laughs> from time to time? Yeah, there absolutely are. And that's what we're about to talk about right now. In fact, for uh, you guys who like to post down in the comments below uh, when the actual video starts, like, you know, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure how people usually phrase it, but it's like, it's kind of demeaning to me. <laughs> it's like real video starts at 10 minutes in or something like that. Look at the, at the time code down below. That's the time code you want to put in because I'm about to start talking about it. Okay, so uh, NPR specifically. In the past, whenever I have been paying attention to NPR and they start releasing uh, news stories that are of a lower caliber of logical integrity, or if they seem like they're kind of propaganda pieces, in the past, whenever that's happened, and that happens very infrequently, I think it's a really good news source that uh, doesn't, you know, fall into those kind of traps, but it does happen, and whenever it has happened, it seems to immediately precede some crazy shit in the next couple of months, you know, following that. 
Um, I'm not going to give a bunch of examples, but here's just one example of a, a time when it happened in the past, was the second Gulf War. Uh, after 9-11, when the United States, uh, the government was talking about wanting to invade Iraq because it had caused 9-11 or whatever, uh, there were people like myself, many people like myself, who thought that was ridiculous. I mean, it's pretty clear to anyone with a thinking brain that, although a lot of people still believe it today, but um, it was pretty clear to anyone with a thinking brain that Iraq really didn't have anything to do with 9-11. Uh, you know, the, the people who, uh, you know, were the perpetrators of 9-11 were sort of like the mortal enemies of the government of Iraq. The idea that they were um, harboring weapons of mass destruction seemed kind of far-fetched. Anyway, it seemed like this crazy idea. Uh, and NPR was providing stories that kind of, you know, were along the lines of reality-based kind of stuff for a, the longest time, and then suddenly it switched. And I noticed the switch. I remember because after 9-11 I was listening to a lot of news. I think a lot of us were. And I noticed this this just day and night kind of tone switch that happened suddenly, uh, where uh, bad ideas were being brought up without any kind of counter-argument, where bad logic was being used. And I remember thinking to myself, it was just like, you know, some random Tuesday, and I was like, you know, is this, are they actually going to do this? Like this crazy idea they had to invade Iraq, is that actually going to happen? Because, you know, we're, we're talking about it as though it's like a foregone conclusion now. Uh, and it did. And that's happened a couple of other times in the past, uh, where NPR has kind of gone off the logical rails. And again, like I say, they're a very, re really valuable news source. Uh, I, you know, here's another example. Leading up to the 2008 financial uh, collapse, you know, uh, the idea of, you know, wanting to, uh, you know, sell a house. If you were going to sell a house prior to 2008, you definitely wanted to light a fire under your ass, liquidate that mofo and, you know, get it out of your inventory. And I remember I helped, I wasn't in myself a position to, um, you know, sell my home, but I remember there were a couple of my friends and I warned them, you know, this thing looks like it's gonna happen based on the reporting of NPR. You probably wanna sell that house sooner than later. You know, maybe you don't get exactly what you're hoping to get because the market was going up and up and up and up. Uh, but, you know, you might wanna liquidate that because we're looking at a crash happening soon. Some of the friends listened, some of the friends didn't, and then the crash happened. So it is a really valuable news so uh, service, but sometimes that happens, and when it does, like I said, things very frequently are about to go sideways when NPR reporting starts getting illogical and um, propaganda-ish. And it's happening now. I'm noticing over the past couple weeks that there are a lot of stories going out with just really lousy thinking in them. And I'm just gonna give you one example of it. Uh, you know, there's been this kind of uh, controversy, whatever, about whether or not the, uh, you know, uh, COVID was uh, naturally occurring or whether it uh, rose from, you know, the work at the Virology Institute in Wuhan. Uh, you know, it, I think to some degree it's kind of like a silly debate to begin with anyway, because I think it really doesn't matter. All that matters is whether it could have come from the Vi Virology Institute, because if we can acknowledge that things like this c could come out of these types of uh, operations, I think that, that we need to have a discussion about whether we want to keep having these kinds of facilities if this type of thing is possible. It doesn't matter whether it happened this time, it just really matters whether it's possible and that should fuel a discussion as to whether or not we want to keep these things going forward into the future. It's kind of like if your house burned down and having a big debate about whether it just happened naturally or whether your child's uh, penchant for playing with matches might have played something uh, into, into that whole equation. You know, it really doesn't matter whether your house burned down naturally or whether your kid burned it down with matches. All that matters is that there is a p possibility that your kid's habit of playing with matches could become problematic, and maybe you should be addressing that independent of whether it's caused, you know, your, your particular house to have burned down. So, in a way, I think it's kind of like a silly argument to make. I, I guess maybe there's some scientific reasons for wanting to know where it came from. Maybe that could give scientists some information about uh, developing better vaccines uh, against it. And I do feel like, you know, um, uh, the idea of developing a vaccine. That's a great idea to try to, you know, work on that. I know I've been kind of standoffish with, um, you know, the current set of vaccines because they're just so new and I really want to see the way things go and like how the boosters, uh, you know, go over time. You know, it, your, your first dose, you, you have a certain amount of side effects. Second dose, people have had like more side effects. Like what's the third dose, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth dose is going to be like if you have to keep doing boosters. So I kind of want to see the way all that plays out, but I'm not anti-vaccine. I have all the normal vaccines. It's just I'm not really big into really cutting edge new ones. Um, but anyway, uh, you know, there's this big debate going on about where did uh, COVID come from? And uh, apparently there was a letter that was signed, uh, you know, uh, co-signed by lots and lots of different scientists saying, you know, it's, it's a worthy question to ask whether or not it came from 
this virology institute that's like right across the street, essentially, you know, not literally, but essentially from, you know, this place where people think it might have uh, arisen from. So, like, let's investigate that. Well, anyway, one scientist out of the whole pile of all these scientists, after looking into it a little more, uh, has issued a statement saying, you know, after thinking about it more, I think it probably was naturally caused. Huge spread in NPR, big, uh, you know, top, uh, you know, top headline, you know, scientists claim, you know, scientists that have believed this has changed his mind and now believes this. One of them believe, <laughs> changed their mind. It's kind of like with climate change where, uh, you know, like Fox News will have like the one scientist who's like happens to be paid by ExxonMobil that has kind of like a counter view of climate change. You get like, a, a, you know, a hundred thousand or a million other scientists and it's like, well, we're going to focus on this one scientist. You know, people criticize that. They laugh about that. It's ridiculous. But NPR started doing that. Uh, type of thing and other things as well and whenever like I said NPR starts getting into this garbagey illogical reporting in the past it's led to some pretty crazy shit not too far off into the future so I wanted to mention that to you guys uh, I am paying extra close attention at this point because whenever this has happened in the past something has been coming something might be coming just because it happened in the past doesn't mean it's going to happen forever into the future. It's just a correlation that I've noticed, and I'm sharing it with you guys. So, whatever you guys can do to kind of harden your situation, you know, get ready. I mean, it's kind of a morphous. I don't have any specific, uh, you know, suggestions to you other than the, the usual stuff. You know, get your food ready. Get your water ready. You know, have some plan for backup power and things like that. Um, I don't know what it is in this case. I don't know what it is. But something might be coming, and... It sounds like every other prepping channel, <laughs> and I don't mean it to be, but I just, I feel like I should share this with you, that um, whenever this has happened, something crazy has happened after the fact. If I start developing more concrete ideas on it, I will definitely be sharing them with you, but I don't like to hold back on information um, that could maybe prompt you to at least start, uh, you know, focusing on what you need to do in terms of the stuff that you know can help, food, water, all that stuff, and keep your eyes open. Keep your eyes open because uh, normalcy bias can affect all of us and uh, things oftentimes can change on a dime. And maybe that's happening. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's not. <laughs> but I want to share it with you guys. That's it. Thanks for watching. If you leave comments below, I apologize if I don't uh, respond to them, if they get deleted. But I promise you, I do read all the comments. And even if they get deleted from YouTube, they don't get deleted from up here. And the thoughts that you guys share with me stay in my head. I'm thinking about them all the time, and at the very least, they get shared out in ideas and videos like this in the future. So please continue to comment. I appreciate your thoughts. One of the biggest reasons I do this channel is because I really appreciate the dialogue. I know that I've shared a lot of ideas with you guys that you guys have appreciated, and I've appreciated a lot of the ideas that you guys share with me. I certainly don't do this channel because it makes me more effective at cutting firewood, because that's really what I'm supposed to be doing right now is cutting firewood, <laughs> but I wanted to share that with you guys. So that's it. Keep the comments coming, and even if they get deleted, they're all up here. That's it. Thanks for watching. This episode is brought to you in part by Burning Hearth Homestead, a nonprofit that aims to provide seeds, live plants, and education to the community, both local and extended. Plant seeds, plant knowledge, plant the future. If you'd like to thank them for supporting this channel or find out more about what they do, go to burninghearthhomestead.org. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.